نحمده ونصلي على رسول النبي الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إحدنا السراط المستقيم سراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضادين آمين قال الله تعالى في شأن حبيبي إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم سل على سيدنا هلان محمد وعلى على سل على سيدنا هلان محمد بارك سم سل عليه صلاة وسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Uh, inshallah today uh, we will continue with our uh, talk on uh, Musa alayhi salam. And as we finished or we got to last time, we were talking about you know when the plagues came, the five plagues, the flooding, the the locusts, the lice, the toads, and the blood. Uh, and at the end or or when the people of Firaun, uh, along with Firaun, you know, would get to the point where they couldn't stand anything any further. They would come to Musa alayhi salam, and they would request request him. And this is mentioned in Surah Araf, Surah number seven, verse number one thirty-seven. Actually, one, verse number one thirty-four, where Allah subhanahu wa taala he says, you know, and where the people of Firaun they would and Firaun and his people would address Musa alayhi salam, Ya Musa, Udulna Rabbaka. بما أحد عندك أدلنا ربك بما أحد عندك that O oh Moses invoke your Lord by the covenant that he has taken with you or and then they would continue on لأن uh, that you know if you do this then we will for your sake believe in you and for your sake, we will free the children of Israel. That we will, for your sake, believe. You know, if you rid us of this plague. Uh, and as I said last time, you know, this Ahad or this. Uh, covenant that they are, or this oath that they are referring to, is in reality the oath that all the prophets took, which is, you know, mentioned in Surah Ali Imran, verse 81, Surah number 3, you know, where Allah SWT starts off with, وَإِذَا خَدَ اللَّهُ مِيثَاقَ النَّبِيِّينَ لَمَا عَتَيْتُكُمْ مِنْ كِتَابٍ وَحِكْمَةٍ ثُمَّ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٍ You know, that, and remember when we took the oath from the prophets, you know, that we give you book and wisdom and then comes to you, Ja'akum Rasulun, you know, this messenger. You know, what do you do? You know, you render him help and you support him. And they took all of this oath and this is how they were given, or under the conditions that they were given, prophethood. So this was the oath they took. You know, so people start wondering, well, how did they know about Rasulullah uh, And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this also in Surah Araf, verse number 157, where he starts off, you know, the verse starts off with Alladina uh, Yattabiwuna Rasula, you know, and uh, those who, those who uh, follow the messenger. And then Nabi al Ummi, and unfortunately that gets translated as, you know, the unlettered prophet. And I'm going to come back to this point. Uh, in a minute. But the verse continues, whom they find mentioned or written in what they have of their books, the Torah and the Injil. You know, so even what they have left after all of the changes that they have made, uh, the mention of Rasulullah is still there. You know, because again, all of the prophets, they told their people about Allah, of course, you know, that there is no God, no one to be worshipped except Allah. But they also told their people about the coming of Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
You know, and so, you know, this verse mentions this. And so, as Musa al-Islam is preaching to his people, he's also reminding them and telling them of the coming of Rasulullah sallallahu And so, you know, he mentions this, and then, you know, the verse continues on, you know, talking about Rasulullah sallallahu that he, he, he enjoys, enjoins what is good or what is right and forbids what is wrong. And he makes lawful you know, this is the authority Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given Rasulullah that he makes lawful what is good and pure and he uh, uh, forbids what is unclean or prohibits what is unclean. So this is the authority of Rasulullah and then it goes on to say that, uh, that he uh, you know, that, that he relieves them, relieves the people of their burden and the shackles that they have been uh, placed under. And in the end of the verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about, so they who have believed in Him and who have honored Him and supported Him and followed the light which was sent down with Him. Indeed, those are those who will be, these are the ones who will be successful. You know, and, you know, you, and when we look at this verse, it explains our situation today. Yeah. And the last part of this we're going to come to, but coming back to the first part where it says, Nabi al-Ummi. And as I said, unfortunately, this gets translated as unlettered prophet. And if you look at what unlettered means, it means not able to read or write. You know, it's really a synonym for, uh, for illiterate. You know, they try to, you know, come up with a milder version of the same thing. You know, illiterate, meaning ignorant. You know, and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi is mentioned to the people, to the previous nations, as Nabi al-Ummi. I mean, you know, if you think about it even from, you know, just a regular standpoint, why are the other prophets going to say, oh, we're, Allah sending this illiterate prophet? Astaghfirullah. Uh, Nabi al-Ummi, you know, there are many origins to the actual word, to the actual meaning of this, but Nabi al-Ummi, you know, if you remember, Makkah, whose old name was Bakka, but Makkah is also known as Umul Qura, the mother of cities. In the Old Testament, there is passage in Psalms where it refers to the blessed valley of Bakka, or Bakka as they call it, B-A-C-A -C is the way they spell it. So this place is mentioned, and this is this blessed place. Again, this is the mother of cities. And anyone who was from Makkah was known as Ummi. He's from Ummul Qura. He's from the mother of cities. Whether he knew how to read or write or not, it was irrespective. Yeah. This is why the Jews came and settled in Medina Munawwara, because they knew that Rasulullah was going to immigrate to Medina Munawwara from Makkah. So this is all given in their books. Yeah. And if you can read through the lines, it's still in their books. And so Nabi al Ummi is the is the prophet who is sent to the people who are known as who are from Ummul Qura. Yeah. This is the Makkan prophet. Yeah. There are other meanings which we're gonna go into later, inshallah. But for right now, you know, just, you know, people that challenge the knowledge of Rasulullah you know, they have some basic problem. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here, he also, when he, in this verse, he talks about the authority that this prophet is being sent with. That he has the authority. You know, that whatever he thinks, or whatever he considers good, he can make it lawful for you. And whatever he considers bad, he makes it unlawful for you. This is the authority Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with. So again, when Fir'aun and his people are coming to Musa al-Islam, they know about this promised prophet to come. And the authority that he is going to be sent with. And his status above all of the other prophets. 
And so they're asking Musa al -Islam, to invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based on that oath that you took from your Lord about this Prophet. And then if you do this, then we will do all the things you want us to do. And of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when, they, when Musa al -Islam, fulfilled his end, they backed out on their end. And as I said, we're going to come back to this verse later on, inshallah. And, you know, again, if you look at the condition of the Ummah, you know, we do not honor Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, we challenge his, his authority. Oh, he didn't have the authority to do this. Yeah, it's written in the books. You know, various people, they write in their books. Oh, he didn't have the authority to do this or that. I mean, and then what do we expect from Allah? You know, he is khayr khalqillah. This is a basic requirement for, is for, for Iman is to believe in Rasulullah as, as the best of creation. As Hassan bin Thabit radiallahu said, خُلُقْتَ مُبَرْعًا مِّن كُلِّ عَيْبٍ And that you are created without any faults. Not knowing something is a fault, it's a shortcoming. You know, so to challenge the knowledge of Rasulullah and say, oh he didn't know this or he didn't know that, are we honoring him and supporting him, or what are we doing? Are we respecting him? No. Yeah. You know, to say, oh, he didn't have the authority to do this or that, again. You know, it's like I was, when we were talking about Yusuf, salam, and you know, I was telling that, you know, when one of the uh, guys, when I was in college, you know, he wanted to, dis uh, to argue with me that Yusuf, salam, was more handsome and beautiful than Rasulullah, so salam, astaghfirullah. Again, he is khayr khalqullah, he is the best of creation in everything. In beauty, physically, strength, mentally, spiritually, every aspect of his being is the best in creation. Far beyond any other creation. And if we don't understand this, then Allah subhanahu wa says that we will not be successful. And this is the condition of the ummah today. The other thing that's going on at this time, you know, when all of these things are going on with, with uh, Fir'aun and his people, you know, the wife of Fir'aun, whose name is Asiya, you know, she's mentioned in the Qur'an in Surah Tahweer, Surah number 66, uh, verse number 11. You know, she's not mentioned by name, but she's mentioned as the wife of Fir'aun. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions her in contrast to the disbelieving wife of Lut salam and Nu al salam you know, showing how they had everything going for them. You know, they had no excuse to, to disbelieve, and yes, they, yet they disbelieved. There was no excuse why they should not believe. You know, these were the wives of prophets who had all of this in their favor, and yet they still chose to, disbe to disbelieve. And here on the, on the contrast of this, we have the wife of Fir'aun, who has every excuse to disbelieve, and yet she chooses to believe. Yeah. And, and in the verse, you know, it's mentioned how she, as she's being tortured, she prays to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to build a house or a mansion for her in the garden close to him. You know, her, his nearness, because his near, uh, the, the nearness and here we're talking spiritually, the nearness of Allah is Jannah. And so she's asking for this, and she asks that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect her from, you know, Fir'aun and from the wrong, those who do wrong. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthens her Iman. He answers his prayer, her prayer by strengthening her Iman. And, and you know, Rasulullah sallam, we know her name is Asiya, you know, from what Rasulullah sallam has taught us. And the way she was tortured, you know, if you remember the people of, uh, or the, the magicians, you know, Fir'aun, he crucified them on the palm trees. Uh, this wife of his, and this is the wife who he loved so much. And yet because she, she believed in the Lord of, Mu, of Harun and Musa, you know, now that love becomes hatred. 
because in, in reality he only loved himself. So so long as she was supporting him and propping him up and, and boosting his ego, he loved her. And now when that was not happening, now he hates her. And so they stake her to the burning sand in the desert you know, and torture her until she dies. And in the end, you know, when all of this torture is going on, when she asks Allah SWT to show her this place, you know, to give her a place close to, to him in Jannah, or his nearness in Jannah. You know, again, this is, you know, being close to Allah, being near to Allah, and not a physical nearness. And Allah SWT, he, he removes the curtains from in front of her eyes, and she sees her place in Jannah. And when she starts seeing this, she starts laughing. You know, they are torturing her and she's laughing. And Firaun says, oh, she has gone mad. Yeah. And she dies in this condition with her Iman intact. So, You know, Rasulullah also mentions the four greatest women who, has, who have ever lived. In chronological order, you have Bibi Asya, the mother of Isa al-Islam, Bibi Maryam, the beloved wife of Rasulullah, Bibi Khadija al kubra and the beloved daughter of Rasulullah, Bibi Fatima. Salam be upon all of them. The greatest of them, of course, is Bibi Fatima because she is literally a part of Rasulullah Sallallahu yeah. Alaihi Wasallam. She is in reality even greater than her own mother because again she is part of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is the ruling of Imam Malik. He said that she is uh, above everybody else after the prophets because he said because how can I place anyone or anything above even a part of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so, but, but Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi mentions her as one of the four greatest women to have ever lived, the, four, what, the wife of Firaun. Yeah, because, uh, because everything going in the opposite direction, she chose Iman, she chose belief. After all of this has gone on, you know, all the plagues have come and all of these things have happened and the people still refuse to believe. Musa al-Islam is instructed to, during the night, take the people of, or the children of Israel out of Egypt. You know, and because Firaun, he's still stuck on his arrogance and his ego and he's not going to free them. So during the night, just leave. But he's also instructed, when he's instructed to leave, that he needs to take the body of, of Yusuf salam along with him. Yeah. Because if you remember, Yusuf salam was buried in Egypt. The problem was that there was no one among the children of Israel who remembered, or even the people of Egypt, who remembered where Yusuf salam was buried. Now Musa al -Islam knows, because he of course is the prophet, uh, but there was only one old woman who knew this. And so Musa al -Islam is instructed to go and ask her. And of course, why is he instructed to go and ask her if he knows? Because Allah subhanahu wa wants to show the status of this old woman. And as I mentioned when we talked about Nuh al -Islam, you know, Rasulullah has praised the Iman or the belief of old women. And so, he goes to her and he tells her, he says that he's been instructed to ask her about the burial place of Yusuf uh, This woman, she is brilliant. She knows if he's been told to come and ask her, then this is some, this is very valuable information. So she asks him, she says, well, you know, this information is not free, so what will you give me for this? 
Musa al Islam, he says, you know, whatever you want. You know. The I'm gonna to get to this next time, inshallah. Because this is connected to an incident with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know, after the Battle of Hunain when he is distributing the spoils of war, and we're going to make that connection, which is a very important connection to understand. Uh, and so, uh, inshallah, we'll we'll start from there next week, uh, or I mean, n t next time. I keep thinking next week, but because I keep thinking of Juma, but next next time, inshallah, and. Uh, kind of draw this draw this together but but the question or or the price that this woman places on on this information you know shows you the brilliance of, of, of the iman of older women you know and the belief of these older women uh, ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذريتنا ربنا تقبل دعاء ربنا ذلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم توفر لنا وترحمنا لنكون من الخاسرين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكن عذاب النار يا الله guide us to the straight path and fill our hearts with your love and the love of your beloved Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم his family his companions and all of those whom you love uh, allow us to learn from these lessons and allow us to uh, uh, try to understand the status of your beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam and uh, raise us up in a condition where you are pleased with us and we are pleased with you uh, and allow us to be uh, under the shade of, of the flag of your beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the Day of Judgment and allow uh, him to intercede on our behalf وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه محمد وعلى وسائر جميع رحمته يا رحمه الرحمين.